pas en pit. Hello everybody, welcome back. So, um, as the uh, as, as the clickbait suggested, we have a breakout confirmed on the Nasdaq. And uh, the reason we look at the Nasdaq is because uh, it would appear that Nasdaq has given us a general indication of uh, where people want to put their money. Now, the Nasdaq is consolidated just like Bitcoin's consolidated. There's not really much difference to it. We've got a, a general direction of, uh, of, of um, consolidation, which is what a descending triangle is. And it would appear that we've broken out of it pretty much at the right time, really, getting towards the end of the apex, maybe 70 75% towards the end of this, and probably a little more, to be honest with you. So we're going to have to see, again, when American markets open today, uh, how this continues. Will it continue up towards the top of the Bollinger Band, maybe even to the top of this area of resistance, edging up basically towards 14,000. So I know it's boring to talk about traditional markets, but to be honest, I've, I, you know, occasionally I do slip a bit of traditional markets in there. We even look at some stocks. And for the record, like, um, you know, I've been putting money into my uh, stocks and shares pension. That's right, pension, which means I'm not going to get access to it for a good 20 years. But with the market looking the way it does, there's some serious discounts on there uh, and so yeah I've, I've been uh, as of yesterday that i did start topping up into my my stocks and shares pension again you know this is more of a trade uh, a long-term trade investment effectively it's a pension i mean i can switch these things around whenever i like you know um but uh, but yeah i'm not going to be able to you know take it out for a good 20 years and i feel as though you know we might not be hitting an absolute bottom for uh, traditional markets but it's an educated guess that it's a decent discount to, to put some back in. So, yeah, there's my pension's looking okay. I've, I've added to that portfolio. But when it comes to crypto, it's still the same deal, really. So uh, we, we saw the breakout of that descending triangle. We want to see that uh, continue on uh, today. And if we think about what this looks like on a weekly for the NASDAQ, we've got so far what's called a bullish engulfing candle, which is, again, bullish by nature. We want to see this close, though, which will be closing today. It's Friday today, so we'll see how that goes. So let, let's see. Uh, let's think about the correlation. So normally you do have a correlation between um, especially Nasdaq and, and Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, Bitcoin, we've recognized this from the beginning of that pump uh, on the Nasdaq, which was the day before the rate hike. People getting excited. You know, again, you know, like I've been saying the entire time, markets have a habit of pricing things in. They price in the rate hike despite inflation being high. So we go down and down and down. Then the rate hike takes place. And what happens? We go up. Counterintuitive stuff. The market just has a habit of doing the work for the Fed, you know, they know what's going on uh, way in advance. It's not like they know, but the, the markets tell you. So largely priced in. So we're, we are expecting just by default for uh, Bitcoin to continue with that. So that means that I would be expecting if we can hold above 41,000, to be honest, which is a big deal. We do need to hold above 41,000. Otherwise, we're likely to come back down towards 37. But if we can get above there and continue up, top of the Bollinger Band is also this uh, this this resistance box. So we're talking about 7.5% move from the can today's candle body right now. 44,000 to maybe 46,000. And right in the middle of that is your... That is your 200 exponential, which is a major area uh, of resistance. So we want to see that being reclaimed. Once this is reclaimed, then we are going to be talking about actually reversing this. Uh, you know, there's a very good chance that this will reverse going up to all time highs. And what will this do to altcoins? Well, as we saw yesterday, altcoins then, uh, you know, had a little bit of a, a tiny bit of a, a moment in the sun, right? A little, a little day of, of small victories, uh, but it's not, it's not anything really. It's, it's basically people trying to you know, make them most of what would appear to be uh, a safe market for a 24-hour period <laughs> okay that's all it is there's no particular buy signals on there on altcoins really not really not for continuation moves doesn't mean that they've not already hit their lows they could easily have hit their lows we know that the market generally moves as one and if bitcoin's going to move up or at least not move down to a large extent then you could assume reasonably safely that a lot of altcoins have also done that as well so they've hit their double bottoms double bottom here similar to the double bottom that formed um in uh, last summer so I'm thinking that you know markets generally should start to see a little bit of upside, and given the way that the Dix, uh, not the, well, the Dixie is going down, which is obviously a, a, a knock-on effect of rate hikes, but uh, the the traditional markets look like they want to start to recover, and they could potentially recover back up to new all-time highs. 
um, you know, later on this year, you know, by you know, mid to late summer or so. And that would be good for Bitcoin, which in turn would be good for altcoins. Now, we do have a very specific way of trading these altcoins. And, you know, I assume if you watch my channel, you've watched, you know, the, 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 the two main things that we'll be looking at. So the total three or total two and the BTC.D. Uh, we'll be looking at all of that for a major altcoin swings, you know, for effectively alt seasons. But for the moment, uh, Bitcoin is kind of in the shadows of traditional markets, which leaves altcoins in the darkest shadows of everything. So, you know, a very distant afterthought for altcoins. But it doesn't mean that if buying them here is a bad idea. You could buy certain things here, not the absolute worst, shittest coin of ever. Because if you've ever seen a full cycle, including a bear market complete, you would know that some of these altcoins basically die and they never come back to life. Um, so, you know, you know, no altcoin is created equal, but there is a good chance that uh, buying them down here would get some serious gains uh, inevitably in the, in, in the long run, you know, throughout potentially the rest of this year. But it doesn't mean that you uh, you get them instantly. Um, so, uh, Bitcoin at the moment holding above the center of the Bollinger Band, getting a bit of a, a tap from there today. Again, you know, we're going to wait for the American markets. I don't think this has got the movement on it to, uh, to continue on its own. Um, not really. Uh, uh, that would also make it a bit harder to trade it through the weekend because the correlation is so high and uh, and the uh, traditional markets are the ones that are making the moves and Bitcoin's not really doing it. So it would appear that uh, that, that Bitcoin is, is basically being dragged by traditional markets, which is fine for the moment, but it, it might lead to a boring or unpredictable, more unpredictable weekend, maybe even a bearish weekend, to be honest, um, than, than usual. But I'm quite hopeful with the way that it's turning out. <clears throat> Remember, I bought this, this, this entire zone has been bought out now, 40,600 and 35,000. So this, this area is done. No more Bitcoin for me unless we come back down to these levels, which is not unlikely, but it's, you know, it's, it doesn't look particularly likely at this very moment in time. So that's your daily looking basically static and sideways as always. Uh, being above the 200 exponential on the four hourly is good for the moment, but again, relatively weak in the way that it's presenting itself. Um, no particular signals on it as we as we speak right now. Turning back down on the uh, on the MACD. So in, you know until the American markets open, yeah, this is probably going to consolidate back down to these particular levels. So we're talking a flat 40,000 and maybe just below 40,000. Now if we can hold above 40,000 uh, for or what would appear to be a two-day period so coming into next week we will get a buy signal uh, for the Ichimoku cloud that buy signal would be one of those pump moves so giving a move similar to one of these uh, or one of these and um, so that would bring us up to this major area this major box over here and if we can reclaim get getting a higher high than the previous ones because again we've got a high here we've got a lower high here uh, if we can get a higher high, then it will, it will cause most likely a continuation based on the daily. And the daily, like I say, we've got this 200 exponential sitting right in the middle here, about 44,600, going down every single day. Um, if we can reclaim that, that is, the, that is the major stepping stone to a continuation of an uptrend. Uh, and that's what we want to see. So I'm not really particularly thinking that this is going to do anything special for this week or the weekend. Uh, I don't think it's really capable of doing it on its own, as we recognize that the, the traditional market, especially in NASDAQ, is actually out outperforming Bitcoin uh, and so Bitcoin is being you know dragged up by traditional markets and, th and that is okay for the moment that's perfectly fine uh, I'm happy to allow that just to play um, uh, but next week, uh, next week will be a much more interesting week for Bitcoin specifically. Now, altcoins, like I say, some altcoins pump, some dump, some stay still, some move with the market, some don't. They are all different, but generally, if you bunch them all together into one big altcoin bundle, um, they're unlikely to outperform Bitcoin at this particular level uh, consistently. They're, they're, they're in no man's land, and that's fine. Uh, let them be in no man's land. We want to get into the big swing trades, and like I say, we've, we've talked many times about the strategy in order to do that uh, but for the moment we are looking mostly at traditional markets which is so far looking pretty good um, and Bitcoin second to that which again should continue should follow uh, the Nasdaq to an extent and go into an uptrend once it breaks above what we'll call it breaking and closing above 46,000 that would pave the way to the previous all-time high and maybe beyond um, 
but no, nothing spectacular is likely to happen for Bitcoin. I have to say, nor would it happen for altcoins as a as a you know as a bundle. So I'm going to leave with you there. Normally I'd do a live stream tonight, but I can't tonight. So I'm going to do it tomorrow. So if you're a member of the Patreon, uh, you can in, you can enjoy your evening. You can do something constructive or you know just enjoyable rather than listening to me drone on for a couple of hours. And we can save that rare delight for tomorrow. And um, so I'll see you all tomorrow on the live stream. Other than that, I hope you have a nice day and take it easy.